Most beginners stay stuck in Logic Pro for years, but this system changes that. It's already helped hundreds of students, and now it's your turn. So in this video, let me just show you, I'll break it down, a step-by-step -step plan to get you out of that beginner rut and all the tools you need to grow fast. By the way, I've helped hundreds of beginners make their music from home in Logic, and a big part of that is the exclusive advice that I share in my newsletter every week. Join in the description for free. Okay, so let's call the first one step zero. In 2015, I opened up Logic for the first time and I wasn't really sure what I wanted to be. If that makes sense, let me explain. So I spent years learning a bit about everything when really I should have just focused on production because that's what I really love. I don't want to get too deep here on the first one, but you really need to decide who you want to be. Seriously, don't skip this because you'll, you'll waste time, months, just doing the wrong thing in Logic. Do you want to be a producer, a songwriter, a mixer? Maybe maybe you want to be a mix of all three. It doesn't matter. The important thing is you need to decide before starting your journey in Logic. I've seen so many producers spend time worrying about the wrong things in Logic because they think they need to learn them. But when you decide who you want to be, you can really focus on what you should learn. For example, a lot of beginner producers think that they need to learn all about mixing and all these mixing tools when really they should be focusing on what you need to learn in Logic to be a better producer. So first thing, decide who you want to be. Producer, a mixer, a songwriter, a mix of all three. It doesn't matter, but it's important that you decide because that is your North Star. Okay, so after you decide who you want to be, you know, kind of ex existential question at the beginning, but what's the first step of the system? So from having taught hundreds of students and having like, hours worth of calls or Zoom calls, teaching students how to navigate through logic, it's really easy to see the one common problem that sticks with everyone. And it's mindset. Most people, like most beginners, just want their songs to sound amazing right away. Like the day that they download Logic Pro. And I'm going to tell you right now, that will just not happen. It's going to take two or three years of doing this consistently before you start to see any real improvement. I know, huge buzzkill there, but the progress that you will get over two or three years of doing this consistently will compound over time and you will get good, I promise. In 2021, I, I actually thought about quitting because it was taking me so long for me to actually get good, but more to shift my mindset to become a, a confident producer. And it wasn't until later in that year where I finally hit my stride and built my confidence. So the other thing besides that, because you want your songs to just sound good, you need to kill the perfectionism inside of you. Focus on the reps of practice and not the results. Think of it like going to the gym, like you wouldn't expect to get ripped the first time or even second, third time, fourth time, fifth time about going to the gym, right? It takes months and years to finally look ripped. It's the same thing in logic. So what's the next step of the system? Well, we need to set the strategy now. I know, I know it's kind of so businessy of me to talk about strategy, but really strategy is just another fancy word. It's not even that fancy, but it's another word for plan. We need to have a plan. So what should your plan look like? Your plan needs to include your goal, which needs to include the why of why you're using logic. I know it gets deep, but just if you go through this, it's going to help provide structure to your mission and logic. So without a clear goal, every plugin or YouTube video just becomes a distraction. You'll be busy, but not better because you'll be watching so many tutorials and thinking like you're learning things, but you're not guided in your approach. There's a missing why and there's a missing goal. You need that strategy. For instance, do you want to make an album? Do you want to write a hit song? Do you want to come become a full-time producer? Or maybe you just want to record demos. What is it? You need to know it and you need to write it down so that you have a plan to work towards. So um, I'll go a bit more deeper on this uh, later in the video. First, let's uncover the next step of the system. So what is it? Well, it's gear. I know, I didn't think to bring up gear so early in the video, but it's important to know. You can have all the gear, but if your song doesn't move people, then it just will not matter. So it's really important to get good at songwriting. It's not about the equipment. It's not about the gear. It's more about like your skill of writing and crafting great art. This one change alone improved my productions dramatically way more than any other plugin or equipment I've ever bought. Okay, so if we're going to talk about songwriting, what are the aspects of songwriting that you should focus on? I would practice your melody writing and song structure. 
as the first two things. So these two skills will have an enormous impact on your productions. Okay, so how do you get better at these two specific things, right? Well, one, you can study great songs. They are all out there in the world for you to listen to and engage with them. So for example, draw out the structure to the songs that you're inspired by and figure out what they're doing. They're right there. What notes are they using? What's their melody like? What's the structure of the melody? Um, you can draw out the entire structure of the song and reverse engineer these things, noticing the patterns that they're using. Study it and get technical with it. It's not easy to do this stuff, but it's there for you to reverse engineer and learn. So the next step in the system is one of my favorites, but yeah, you're not gonna like me for it. Maybe I should have titled this video just you're not going to like me, but you need to find a way to kill all your distractions and find the time to create music. A huge problem that I see as a pattern when I talk to students is that they're just not, they're not devoting the time to practice. Life is already busy to tackle another hobby and learn how to make music, but there is a lot of fat that you can cut around your daily schedule. Just if you just try this, cut social media and TV, or you might need to do like a, a deeper audit on your schedule and you could kind of time, you can clock clock everything you're doing by the hour for a week and write it down and then audit it after and look at what you're doing. Maybe you don't like social media or TV, but there are other things in your schedule that are just wasting your time. I'm talking about a real identity change in a way by optimizing your habits around becoming a better songwriter and producer in Logic. This is a key, key lever if you want to make that step from beginner to you know intermediate or advanced producer. If your music is just a hobby, then it's gonna be just a hobby and it will always be on the side of your desk. Don't expect to improve too much. It needs to have focused time to get out of that beginner rut. For example, I have two kids under two years of age. I run an entire big client list of production. I run this business teaching you how to make music and I also tour and play shows. This sounds terrible when it comes out of my mouth because when it comes out of my mouth, because it's kind of like I'm tooting my own horn, but I don't spend time really on distractions. For example, I don't watch TV. I don't scroll on social media. That's really hard, but I try so hard just to get away from those doom scrolling apps. So cut the fat and you'll be a better producer. Cut the fat, better producer. I should make t-shirts out of that. Okay, so step four of the system will really start to level up your tactical skills in Logic Pro. You need to find a project that you think, that you, that you think, no, that you can sink your teeth into that keeps you accountable of doing lots of good work. So this ties back to your goal, right? So let's say your goal is to record an EP or a small album of six, six songs. And you wanna do that within six months. Then this gives you a project to work towards and to keep accountable on. Okay, but let's say, you know, you don't wanna record an album. What else can you do? You could set up an anonymous profile on YouTube, SoundCloud, or even Spotify and start creating one song per month or at a different frequency and be accountable to publishing those songs on this anonymous profile. I say anonymous because it gives you a more, more freedom to just publish without being scared of what people think. There's a lot of fear of what people will think of your music. I was there too. That goes away in time when you publish more music. I'm digressing a little bit here. You need to have something that keeps you accountable. So for example, I did this for an instrumental channel when I was starting and I released three instrumentals every week for six months. I just kept accountable to that. I wasn't worried about really improving. I was just like, I just have to do this three times a week and then I'll see what happens in th six months. The amount of learning that I accomplished in that time, I had such a massive impact on my skills and confidence, but it's a lot more challenging to stick with that when you don't see those immediate results. You can't expect those immediate results. So don't wait until you feel ready. Pick a project now. Even a messy start at something is better than no start at all. So the next step of the system will show you where you suck. <laughs> yeah, no, no other kind of cleaner way to say that, I guess. I always thought I was a good singer, but it wasn't until someone told me my voice wasn't very strong and that just gave me a totally different perspective on my voice. I always just thought I was a good singer because I've gotten that feedback before, but then it took someone to be a bit courageous to say like, hey, I don't really like the sound of your voice in these songs. Maybe you should try a different color of your voice. And I asked them like, why? Why do you think that? And they just said, "It well, it sounds too high to me. It sounds like you're trying too hard and then I think you can explore different colors in your voice. And I just, you know, of course, very uncomfortable to hear and it's easy to be defensive with that feedback right away, but you honestly need those feedback loops to become better. So if you don't collab, you don't share your work, 
you're going to be moving much slower than others who are. You learn just 10 times faster what you're good at, but also what you suck at, right? So collaboration is such an important tool to break out of that beginner rut. So the next step in the system takes from using something called the skyscraper method. Okay, so if you haven't heard of the skyscraper method, you can think of it like stealing, <laughs> but stealing in a good way. So you, you may have heard of this quote before, like great artists steal. And that's true. You know, we're not literally stealing it and making carbon copies of things, but we're stealing ideas and we're bringing our own authenticity into it. So don't spend your time recreating the wheel for every song you create at the beginning. When you're beginning, it's already overwhelming to learn everything. Take what's working, get inspired by songs, and then add your own spice into it. Obviously, you cannot copy them outright. That's illegal. But the amount of things you're going to learn just from stealing and getting inspired by structure and melody ideas and lyrics don't recreate the wheels in every single area just because you think you have to be authentic you will bring your authenticity into it anyways so if you love xyz song start there reverse engineer it and see what you can learn from it now the next step in the system could be one of the most challenging steps but to me it's the most rewarding step for all of it try to find a skill that you can go deep on. This would be like your, let's say your creative home base and just something that you can always rely on. So for me, that is my voice and my my guitar playing. As a songwriter or producer making music from home, you should try to develop like a T-shaped skill set where you can go deep on one creative area, but also be a generalist on top. I've never met a professional producer really who doesn't have a deep skill set. So the deep skill set is important because this is going to give you a ton of fulfillment because you'll be really good at one thing. Whereas the top bar, the generalist bar, that stuff will kind of develop over time. I can play a few different instruments. I can play in many different genres, but I'm never, I'm not too deep in any of those areas. However, I'm deep in guitar playing and I'm deep in singing. And those are skills that I can rely on in any session. A lot of beginners think they just need to be deep in every single thing. And that's just way too overwhelming. You're not going to be a pro and have a deep skill set in every area. Choose one and then just be a generalist on top for the others. So the next step of the system might take a long time to complete. Sorry again, but the sooner you start, the better. So you got to find a way to start publishing your music online. And I know what you're thinking. Well, I can just finish songs and have them live on my computer hard drive because no, no, it's not the same thing. Definitely feels different when you just literally push it out to the internet. I don't even know where it's going, but it feels different than just having the songs live on your computer. I still remember the day I uploaded my song for the first time. I hummed and hawed about it for so long, judging oh, what, you know, what would people think? Oh, I need to edit this and do this. And like, to be frank with you, like literally no one cares about your music more than you. And once I finally learned this, it just felt a lot lighter. Like, why was I overthinking everything? Publishing your music will slowly help you build an audience and also understand who's listening to your music anyways. What do they like? It's often very different than what you think, especially if you've never released a song, you don't know anything. For example, my song Goodbye, which I kind of released on a whim. I liked it, but I kind of, you know, thought it was a flop in a way, but it now has over 200,000 streams on Spotify. My fans love it. And I just, I never would have thought that. You never know what's going to happen when you release music, especially nowadays with TikTok reels, Instagram reels, Facebook reels, just putting it out online and seeing what people like. So the next step of the system is something you should never stop doing, even when you've reached a level where you think you're amazing. <laughs> always be learning. Whether it's my course or whether it's another course, you need to always be learning a little bit on the side because sometimes people just stop learning and they fall behind. I've seen that happen to some producers nowadays where they, they're not keeping up with the new technology of what it takes to make music. And you can see that they're falling behind. The key point to this step is always create create your music, reflect on it. Okay, what could I have done to, to make that better? Improve, use that knowledge in the next song and then repeat that process. Create, reflect, improve, repeat. The thing is though, even if you get all these steps right, you're still gonna be making mistakes along the way because life isn't perfect. So watch me lovingly roast three producers in this video right here as I uncover the most common mistakes that they make in their productions. And then I tell you exactly how to fix them by rebuilding the production on my own.